you about to make a huge mistake with your investments that could set you back years. But here's the question. Is that mistake selling your investments now before a recession or actually holding on? You, know, let's be honest, the last two years have not been a good time for most investments. With the global stock market still yet to recover from the highs of December 2021, we've also had a huge cost of living increase. I mean, it does feel a bit meh, doesn't it? And in Europe, Germany is already in a recession. The US recently posted bizarrely strong growth figures, but growth in the UK is, well, anemic at best. So is this actually a good time to change your investment strategy? You know, maybe sell down some of your investments? Well, there really are some big things that you need to consider here. So I'm gonna tell you from an investing perspective, how you can best prepare yourself for a recession and also what you need to bear in mind. So first, let's just talk about how likely it is that we're gonna go into a recession. So a recession is where an economy starts to shrink. It's a totally normal and part of the boom and bust cycle that we have in a capitalist economy. Now, its definition by most economists is two successive quarters of declining gross domestic product, which is a fancy way of saying, look, everything we make and produce. So if an economy is making less, there's basically a supply and demand imbalance, and typically people are spending less Money is harder to come by in a recession for businesses and people, and it can also lead to people losing their job. So as you can imagine, an economy is a big old beast, and we can only really ever project this stuff. I mean, you can't really go around the economy and go, oh, hi, 85-year-old Mildred from Slough. How much did you spend last week? Or if you did, you'd, you'd be doing it for a long time. And for that reason, we've got a ton of metrics we have to look at, and some which give us a forward look, and some which are only backwards looking. But one of the forward-looking ones is called Purchasing Managers Index. Sounds boring, and you'd be right. But basically, it's a monthly index and based on the survey of some of the biggest companies in the economy. And it looks at a ton of things like new orders, inventory levels, production, supplier deliveries, and employment. And very simply, if the score is above 50, that means we expect an economy to expand. And if it's under 50, then we expect an economy to contract. Anyway, the most recent readings are Eurozone 43.4, Germany 39.8, US 48.9, and UK 44.2. But the thing is, we can't just go survey says recession. There are a ton of other indicators on top of that which interact, like the job market, how much people are spending, how much we're projected to produce. All of this kind of creates this big weird economy soup that we need to try and spoon through to find the lovely sweet corn. Anyway, in the US, we have red flags on manufacturing, but people are still spending quite a lot, and actually the job market is really strong. It's actually quite hard to have a recession if most people have a job, because as long as people have money coming in, they're not gonna stop living and enjoying life, and you know, why should they? And this is why when the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve, which is the US central bank, have been talking about if they should raise or hold interest rates, it keeps coming back to the job market. As a tight job market means higher wage pressure, which can mean more inflation and therefore less reason to cut rates. Whereas sadly, people losing their jobs means less wage pressure and the economy is slowing down. And of course, the human cost of this all sucks, but it is what it is. So in the Eurozone, we've got red flags for recessions on consumer spending and manufacturing. And if the UK, we look at what the Bank of England expect, they expect the things to be pretty flat with business investment declining. To be honest, when I looked at the UK figures, I looked at this and I personally thought, I bet they're going to go in about a year or two. Oh, we were in a recession in 2023. Surprise! Which is kind of the thing that they've done before. And the reason for this is everything forward looking is just that. It is a forecast and that forecast can get revised. Okay, so let me tell you a story about perfect clarity and hindsight. Some would say 2020 clarity. You must stay at home. See what I did there? Okay, so you probably remember that moment in 2020 where you went, things are gonna get serious. Remember like everything shutting down, shops, everything. I remember walking around a deserted Manchester on my walk per day, like some sort of lost moron. And everyone locked down. It caused the quickest and deepest decline in GDP in history. We literally took the economy off the tracks. And the scale of it, I mean, it was pretty scary, let's be honest. The amount of trash from financial journalists and pundits who were worried about trade issues, Brexit, and then bang, out of nowhere, this happens. So let's imagine you were there again, and if you're advising clients who are saying, look, it's the end of the world, 
Would you honestly have said by the end of 2020 that the global stock market would have been up? Would you have taken that bet? In fact, if you take away all the crazy noise, that would have been a pretty normal year 2020 of stock market returns. The point I'm trying to make with this is that we all try and fit narratives of our world, but it doesn't really help us because we don't really know. And if there's one thing that I've learned of the past decade or so in finance, it's don't underestimate resilience. And I mean this in all sorts of areas, kind of resilience in the economy, resilience in the markets, but also most importantly, resilience in yourself. When we catastrophize, we have this habit of amplifying the worst case scenario, yet discounting our ability to adapt. But all of this misses the point. The thing I think that we can have a lot of confidence in is that for all of history, the declines have been temporary and the advance is permanent. If we go back in the data from 1945 to 2020 in the UK, there has been 11.3 years when the market has been in what's called a bear market. So that's a decline from the top of the market of at least 20%, that's a bear market. Anyway, whereas a bull market, which is an increase of more than 20% from that bottom, has been at 63.7 years. That means that the market has been declining to you know, a lower level for about 15% of the time, and pushing forward about 85% of the time. So the odds of the push forward are ridiculously in your favor, as long as you maintain a consistent investment strategy and expect the declines. And the truth is, look, I don't know what is gonna happen with the markets, neither does anyone else. But my case is, is that we don't really need to know. Long-term money has to be exactly that. So I bet that if I told you that we might go into a recession, the first thing that would be coming to your mind is, stocks are gonna plummet, oh no. And absolutely, there can be some times when that has happened. You know, stocks do plummet and then we go into a recession. 2008, the great financial crisis was an example of that, where it went event, decline, recession. But can you guess that for the S&P 500, the 500 biggest companies in the US market, which is the largest stock market in the world, for the last 15 recessions, all the way back to 1929, how many recessions have had negative returns over the period of that recession? And I bet you're thinking, well, all of them. Well, actually, in seven of those recessions, the stock market performance over the period of recession was positive. That is almost a 50% chance, based on history, that the stock market performance during a recession will be positive. Isn't that wild? So, so why, why is that happening? When things are getting worse, the stock market is still performing positively. And this is the key thing to understand. Are stocks based on what happened in the past? The answer is no. They are the discounted value of the future earnings, which is a really fancy way of saying, if the future production of the great companies of the world, not what happened today or yesterday, is what's getting baked into the price. It's not about whether we go into a recession or not that matters. It's about what the stock market is pricing in compared to what happens. So let's get back to that analogy of asking Mildred what she's spending. Because we can't do that on a backwards looking basis, so economic data, what we use to judge the recession is likely backwards looking, but stock market performance is forward looking. So if we can understand the two differences there, we can stop us conflating news about the economy with what the stock market is gonna do, because those two things are not the same. Now, I do not wanna sugarcoat this and be like, oh, all recessions are good now, because they're not. You know, on average though, the S&P 500 returns are negative for the first few months of the recession, particularly over the first six months, and I'll pop a chart up here. And that's because investor sentiment towards the market generally gets hit by a significant deterioration from what companies earn, and this reduction in spending and production impacts the share price. But then the market, which remember is forward-looking, doesn't wait for the bottom of the earnings. We tend to see equity performance rebound, so the stock market performance rebound strongly, particularly towards the end of the recession which on average in the US lasted for 10 months. And that is really not a very long period of time to try and time reading the tea leaves here. So for this reason, I think we need to be especially careful about a narrative that we assign to a recession, which may or may not happen. The key question, even if that is the case, is not will we go into recession or not, but will what will happen be as bad as what the market expects? And this I think is a really important question because I'm not sure if you've noticed, but what we've been talking about for an age now has been the recession. 
In fact, a headline from Bloomberg called this the most anticipated recession ever. And I do think there is credence to think, look, unlike perhaps 2008 or even 2020, where there was a real shock that got priced in, it certainly doesn't feel that way this time. But of course, look, there's always the specter that something could break in the financial system or something comes out of nowhere. That never goes away. So in my view, we just can't waste too much time worrying about it. So the key things I just want you to remember that when you're seeing all this stuff about the recession is one, look, it's really hard to know when we're actually in a recession. Right now, we've got some indicators that are flashing red. Some freakishly are absolutely fine. A lot of times this data is revised backwards and then debated. So what can you do? Two, even if we do go into recession, we don't know how long it's going to last. And all of market history shows us that the pullbacks are much shorter than the push forwards. So trying to time these things is near impossible. Three, from a historical perspective, almost half of recessions resulted in positive returns using the US data. So that at least gives a good idea that recessions do not necessarily mean the stock market will crash or necessarily even be negative. Four, whatever happens, long-term money, in my view, needs to stay as long-term money. Honestly, who cares about trying to speculate on things we can't control? Anyway, maybe you're worried about how this might affect your retirement. Well, I've created three questions that you need to be thinking about before you retire. And you need to know the answer to these before you do anything, in my view. So give that video a watch. Either way, thank you so much for watching.